special day, it's the day that the Lord has made, and you already know what to do, rejoice and be glad in it. But Sam is coming loaded with an amazing sermon series. Today we are tackling the other two mistakes that people do in marriage and in, in, in relationships. So get your notes ready, send someone a message and invite them to church this morning, and let's have a great time together in the presence of God. Come on, let's go! Come put your hands together, hey! King of Kings, come on.
than the Lord of Lords. You know, we're in a sermon series, and this is limitless in relationships. And my prayer this morning is that wherever you're watching us from, that you'll begin to experience a life of limitless. We're going to sing a song, and this song says that you have rescued my life. Some of us were here because of what God has done. Actually, all of us are here only because of what God has done. Your marriage is working because of what God has done. You're alive because God rescued you from so many situations that could have easily taken you away from where you are at right now. And our prayer is that God will be praised at the highest for what he's doing in our lives. Lord, may you receive all the glory. Indeed, we will never find a God like you. Our response to what you've done to us is hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Be glorified for there is no other God like you. We worship you, Jesus. And you have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm never going back. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm
my life you have Lord, our response is hallelujah, glory to your name. You have rescued our lives and we're never going back. We're never going back to pain. We're never going back to drug addiction. We're never going back to the things of the past. For your word reminds us now the new has come. And Lord, we embrace what newness you have brought into our lives. Our relationships will never remain the same again. We shall follow you faithfully and follow the people that you have placed in our lives faithfully. Lord, we commit and dedicate our lives to you, O oh God. You are love. And because you are love, it's also right to say, there's no love outside of you. So no matter what we do, unless we are in love with you first, we have missed the point. So may you guide us and hold our hands like little children and guide us through this journey of love for the glory and the honor of your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and worshiped. And everybody say, amen. amen and amen. Indeed, we still have so much lined up, so you don't want to go anywhere. In fact, this is a good time. Indeed, send some of that message. Wake up your brother, your sister, tell them church is on, and God, is, God will surely bless you. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. My name is Baina Wamboi and I am a husband and I'm also the director of an organization called Salt Factory Sports Kenya. My name is Belinda, I am his wife and uh, I serve with him. I also work in the private sector. We had just gotten married, we are living in different countries, we come together and then we have some friends from who go to another church and they told us about it and we thought, what do you mean? <laughs> what is first fruits and then they said oh yeah and then for some reason we didn't really ask ourselves at that time we didn't ask questions like so what will we eat and all these things we did not lack like co then covid happened imagine covid happened after what after two months after we given our first fruits and we're thinking okay maybe we'll come up with some ideas to make money covid happens but by 2020 what had happened was in 2020 i got an a traineeship that gave me an, a, a stipend as well and I had just started. So what that meant is you have a second income, but that new income that came also has to go immediately. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we came for that the gathering. Is, yeah. and, and, and Pastor M, you know, talked about free the future. And one of the things that he said is that we want you guys to give equivalent of one month salary. Uh, and so Belinda and I sat there and, and, and Belinda was, we weren't sitting together. We're at actually that point. sitting at different points of the of, of this tent. Like you're sitting at the front. Yes, and you were sitting <laughs> and as usual, I sit at the very back. <laughs> yeah. And and, and we, we, when, when, when it was over, when people were just about to leave and were giving the pledge cards, you know, we just asked ourselves, no, we said actually, you go, think about what God is saying, and then I will also think about a figure that God is saying, and then we'll come together and decide 
you know, hear what God is saying and then do that. And and when we came together, funny enough, so we, we had written down, like we wrote them down. So we we both had notebooks and we had written down a finger, and then we just exchanged <laughs> without saying, because <laughs> yeah. we're like, let's see, maybe go, maybe I was just some it, the devil was just tempting me. Yeah. And uh, and this figure was exactly over, the same. It was the same, but over and above. Our, our, in- our combined income. Our combined income. It was over and above our combined income. Yeah. And we're like, okay, this has to be God because if it was us, would be very, you know, because we're told to give our income, not yes. over and above. It was and our income. Yeah. And so we decided, you know what, this is God, and we're gonna jump into it. But That's- something happened. Mm-hmm. So a week, was it a week? That, that very week after yeah, the actually, gathering? The, the, the same. I mean, the next week after the yeah, gathering. Yeah. Something happened. Yeah. So, so I'm, you. Si- I'm sitting here and I'm talking to my friend. Uh, we're having like a, 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 a WhatsApp call and I'm talking to him. We're talking, uh, we're not talking about money, we're not talking about anything. Yeah, and this and friend, you know, his dad is there. His dad was just sitting there just in sitting the room. There in the room, you know, and then his dad tells this guy, uh, tell him, I hear God telling me to, to give, give him, him a specific him amount. A speci- he gave me a specific amount and that amount was, exact, was exactly the exact what amount we needed that was above our, above our, our income, income for us to, on our to, pledge. to fulfill our yeah. pledge of what we had made. And so it's just been amazing how God has been taking care of us. Yeah. And maybe we can share a couple of things that God has done. Like 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 Belinda shared, when she moved into Kenya, she quit her job to come into Kenya after I convinced her and married her. <laughs> <laughs> she decided to come to Kenya. And when she came into Kenya, she was not working. I was yeah. depending on stipends. Yeah. And so what I did is I used to, you know, have families. Oh, and I had no savings. Yeah, no savings at all. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had a couple of families that were, no, were actually, supporting one, one specific one family that was supporting you. Th- yes. Yeah. One, and then so were like they were trying to so they were trying to help us and they were supporting us. And, and this s- this year, so after that pledge and all this year, what happened is that family called and said, "Oh, we hear this is happening. We're after just we thinking about yeah, we're just thinking about you guys, and would like this year would like to double our pledge to for the whole year." Us. The support we've been giving you, they had already sent it, and then they decided we are going to send the exact, um, like, the same to amount. Double it. Just double. And I never wrote <laughs> them an email and be like, oh, things are tough, right? Now. Never. Nothing. Never did anything like that. Actually, we thought the, the support had stopped. <laughs> yeah. And then another one is yeah. Belinda comes into the country, there are no jobs. Uh, and and people, everyone was calling me crazy. Like, know, like how, how are you, you moving? Leave a job? from a land of job. opportunities. How do you leave a good job? Yes, a permanent contract. To, I know, and going to a, to a country where, where everyone is struggling. Yeah. And, 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 and the funniest 2021, thing, I got a job that <laughs> I don't even, like, I don't even remember how I got it, but I got a job. And then just a week after I got it, someone calls me with two job offers, <laughs> like two, two options yep. of a dream job <laughs> and say, Hey, so uh, I'm quitting my job, and they asked me to recommend someone. I'm recommending Are you still looking? You, because I would like to recommend you. And I'm like, actually, I just said a new job. They're like, oh, and then a friend of mine uh, also told me about a job that a co- they, they need a communications person at their workplace. I think there's something that we keep saying. Yeah. God can afford. God you. can afford me. God can afford you. Because he has. He has afforded yeah. us. We've and he can never, afford you. <laughs> even at one single. We've actually been more generous in yes. our lives. We've given more. We are challenging ourselves every day to give more. We so, realized we've so far actually just this this month we've given five times what we gave last month. Just in this month. Yeah. And that is all because of God. And so if you're there and considering and you have all these worries, I want to tell you, you know what? God can afford you. Yeah. Greetings, Mavuno family. It's such an honor. Whoa, it's so good to be in church today. What an honor to be bringing God's word to you this morning. And I'm so excited about the live audience we have in the house. Uh, this, is, this is Valentine's and it's happy Valentine's. Everybody's in red. Oh my goodness, this is so awesome. And whatever you're watching in the world from, we're so, so glad you can worship with us on this special Sunday. Hey, visitors, uh, we're so glad you're here. You didn't land here by accident. If you just were, were browsing through the web and you came across this, uh, this broadcast, Uh, You're in the right place. This is Mavuno Church, a place where we turn ordinary people into fearless influencers of society. And right now we're going through a series called Relation Slips, how to avoid sabotaging your relationship. And so last week we actually began uh, this series by looking at five common mistakes people make when they're looking for a married partner. And I don't know if you've already seen some of these in your own relationship, for those of you who are there. Uh, We looked at the first three. 
And we said, number one, trusting your feelings, going with your heart. And we say that's a really big common one. Number two, majoring on the minors, focusing on the things that don't really matter. Number three, failing to consult wise mentors. And so if you missed that message, please check it out online on our website, Mavuno Church, www.mavunochurch.org, or on our Mavuno Church uh, YouTube page. Now today we want to jump into part two of the message, and uh, we're just going to be looking at the, the final two common deadly mistakes that many people make when looking for a marriage partner. Now I just want to remind you as we start if you're dating and hope to be married woo, you're in the right house this is your month this is your space and you're going to find some wisdom for yourselves uh, as you get into your relationship please practice the things you're going to be learning this month if you are married already this is also your relationship series because it's going to help you begin to examine your, 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 your own foundation and say, do I have cracks? Do we have cracks? Some of you are even older. You've been married for longer, but your kids now, your teenagers, should be listening to this message. It's a great place for you to use the lessons you're going to be learning to mentor, to have family conversations on. Now, if you're single and you're not searching yet or you're single and you're searching but not in a relationship, uh, this is going to, be help it's going to help you as well. Because basically, you're going to be able to help friends who are sabotaging their relationships, or it's going to help you be prepared so if God ever leads you into a relationship, then you'll know what to do as well. And then finally, if you're separated or you're divorced, our prayer is that God's timeless wisdom will help you process your experience. Because let me tell you something, experience, it may be a negative experience, but God can even use a negative experience and turn it into positive blessing for others. And so my prayer is that this will not be wasted for you as well. It'll be a time for you to introspect, to learn, and to grow. As we grow together as a church, to be a healthy community characterized by healthy relationships. So I want us to move on to number four. Anybody ready for number four? Yeah. All right, let's do this. Mistake number four that many couples make when they're choosing a marriage partner is dating in isolation. Dating in isolation. Now, I don't know, this is so interesting because modern technology, it's robbed us of the ability to enter into genuine friendships and relationships. I mean, you walk into an office nowadays over lunch hour and you're gonna find people staring at their gadgets. Everyone's looking down. They're on social media, they're chatting on WhatsApp, they're talking to distant friends and there are friends across the table that they could be talking to, but it's easier to talk to people who are far away than the people close to us. So our gadgets are robbing us of the ability to have real friendships. And you know, we don't even remember what real friendships look like. And then you enter, you join, throw in a busy career with deadlines, you throw in a couple of side hustles, especially if you're Kenyan, you have to have those to be a genuine Kenyan. And what happens is you find a, a generation of people with little time for relationships. And so one of the consequences of this is that when couples finally start to date, and many of them, by the way, many people don't date because they're so busy, they don't even know how to find a spouse. But when they finally start to date, they find themselves spending a lot of time by themselves. Just going around by themselves. Just like those Hollywood rom-coms. It's like they just look at each other, they drink love as they just watch each other. And, and I'm telling you, it's just like that's all they do. And many couples, you have that, uh, the ones who do happen to have friends, the ones who know how to make friends, it's his friends and her friends, but there's never our friends. Now, let me just say this, guys. You're setting yourselves up for trouble if this is you. Just like you need to surround yourself with wise mentors, you also need to surround your relationship with good mutual friendships. King Solomon in Proverbs 13, 20 said these words. He said, become wise by walking with the wise. Hang out with fools and watch your life fall to pieces. <laughs> so it's like surround yourself with wise friends. Not just any friends, but wise friends. Now, why is it so important to surround yourself with good friends? Number one, because you will need a community of good family friends once you're married. Let me just say this. You know, it's, it's so interesting because family friends produce a plausibility structure. What's a plausibility structure? It basically is a protective structure where you can say, even if everybody in the world, all the other couples in the world are doing crazy things, we have some friends around us who believe the same values and they support us in living out those values. You know, I find so many young couples today who are isolated. When something goes wrong, they have no one to process with. No friends who are walking along the same journey. They think they're the only ones who've ever gone through this issue. And the sad thing is if they don't know that it's normal for every couple to go through this. And they don't know how easy it is to overcome because others have overcome it. And so they give up. And sometimes you talk to somebody and they're divorced and you find out what actually was the issue. And you're like, that? Like every couple goes through that. That's not insurmountable. But guess what? They didn't have a plausibility structure around them. They had nobody around them to tell them that's normal. All men snore. No, actually, that's not true. 
But whatever it is, all men are like that. All ladies do this. Don't worry. We have the same issues as well. We are going to overcome. So number one, you need those friends around you, those family friends, because of that plausibility structure. Number two is that no one, no one person is sufficient to meet all your needs. Let me just tell you, forget what Hollywood tells you. There's not one single person who can meet all your needs. I realized this, by the way, as a young husband, because I was so frustrated the first few years trying to meet my wife's needs and, trying, and she was trying to meet my needs. And then one day it just dawned on me that there's some needs that my wife has that will be best met by her girlfriends. Like going window shopping. I mean, like just people to go as she's trying on dresses. That is something, like I tell you, I love her with all my heart. But it doesn't, it doesn't satisfy me. It doesn't fill my cup. I do it for her. But she has friends and sisters who, when they do that, my goodness, they come home, they're happy. Happy, happy, happy. And, and, and I'm just like, wow, it, she, she's even happy. The whole house is happy because she went out with her girlfriend. Let me tell you, if it was me, we'd have come home not talking. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? I just began to realize I can release you with those friends. And she began to realize there are some things I do with guys that are so much better when I do them with guys. I have so much more fun. Let me tell you, as a young couple, this was very threatening stuff. But it was so useful to discover. And you know, here's the thing about it. When the good thing about having those family friends is when your, your husband goes out with the boys, it's people you trust. It's people you know. When your wife goes out with the girls, it's people you know. It's people you trust. And this is why we do our Andor, by the way, incidentally, this is why we do our Andor classes at Mavuno Church in cohorts. Why? Because we want couples to form those supportive relationships of family friends. Now, now, if you're looking for a spouse, be a Liverpool fan. Any Liverpool fans in the house? <laughs> like, don't walk alone. <laughs> don't walk alone. I mean, I don't care which fan, football team you support. Just never walk alone. Don't walk alone with your spouse. <laughs> like, have friends around you. You know the African saying, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with others. This is what we say. Go with others. King Solomon wrote this in the book of Proverbs. He says, uh, he, by the way, he, 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 this is such a powerful proverb. He says, wounds from a friend can be trusted, but enemies multiply kisses. Mm. What he's saying is don't just walk with, other, with many people without knowing who they are. Surround yourself with people who are able to call you out. Don't just surround yourself with people who cheer you and say yes to everything you're doing. But find yourself with people who can ask you the hard questions. If I give them the permission... Oh, are there couples that you've asked and said, please, you have meddling rights in our lives. If you see us doing the wrong thing, call us out. Give them permission to do that. You know, it's very interesting because many of us lack such friends, and especially the guys, men. I don't know what it is about our culture, but our culture defines a real man as a guy who, who has no chills. He has no feelings. He doesn't show off any feelings. In fact, the, the big thing I hear guys being, saying nowadays is stay Taliban. Have you ever had guys being told stay Taliban? Like don't be a simp, you know? Like just be, like don't show feelings. Like real men don't show feelings. That macho man. And let me just say this. Let me just say this. When it comes to relationships, guys, you can find guys, uh, you can go out with your boys, you play football, you have fun together, and nobody in that circle, you've been doing this for months and nobody knows you're not even talking to your wife. The last time you're in the same room with her was a long time ago. You don't even show that you're bleeding on the inside. And no wonder there are incidents of men committing suicide in our city where everybody is caught by surprise. This, 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 this guy who was so successful, and all of a sudden it's like, how could he have done that? Men are hurting. The boy child is hurting. And it's time for us to learn to open our hearts. Who are those friends around us that we can talk to safely? We need all the support we can get if we want to have successful relationships. If you want your marriage to last, you need people to walk with you and to help you. You need an army of loyal friends, of family, of church mates who want the best for your marriage, who will cheer you on your anniversary, who love it that your marriage is, going, is doing better. In relationship, by the way, I've always found that isolation and secrecy are the beginning of devastation and loss. Once you start finding that you're the only ones discussing this issue, it's so heavy, it's carrying you down, but you have no one to talk to, you're already in trouble. And that's not the time you wait for. Begin to form the friendships now when you have an opportunity. The Apostle Peter warned us about this. By the way, let me just tell you, if you've ever watched, I, whenever I read this verse, I always think of National Geographic. Uh, uh, I think of National Geographic. Let me read the verse and I'll tell you why. First Peter 5, 8, be sober-minded and watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a lion seeking someone to devour. Have you ever watched in National Geographic when those lions are hunting a cahad of wildebeest or of zebra? Like the, the lioness, the lead lioness is just watching. It's just looking. And the rest are just getting into position. They will never attack the herd. 
they always look for that one isolated weak one. They look for the one that is far from the rest. It somehow has strayed away from the, the safety of the herd. And that's the one they target. And the Bible says your enemy is prowling, looking for that weak marriage, looking for that weak relationship. He's waiting to find you isolated so he can tear you apart and devour you. Don't date in isolation because your relationship will end in desolation. That even rhymes, right? It's like don't date in isolation because your relationship may end in desolation. Somebody just drop a mic right now in the house. Listen, people, I'm serious here. God wants us to have good relationships. God wants us to have good marriages in this house. I really believe this is part of the destiny of Mavuno Church, that we will have sound relationships. And this, by the way, is another great reason for you to join our discipleship group. If you're single, that's a place to find like-minded other friends who become your family friends in the future, <laughs> among other things. But also, if you're, if you're married, this is a place to find good friendships that can support you, people who will cheer your marriage. Don't isolate yourself. So that's the fourth mistake. Mistake number five, ignoring good friends. I want to conclude with mistake number five, ignoring good friends. Now, this one I really have to speak about. Because the gospel, according to Hollywood, has taught us something that I call the spark theory. Have you guys ever heard of the spark theory? So the spark theory is that thing that says the only way you can be sure somebody is right for you is when they walk into the room, you feel a spark. Like you just feel that undeniable feeling of chemistry and connection. You know, I always hear when people come after a breakup and they say, have you ever had people saying something like, I broke off things because we just didn't connect anymore. Or, or, or I, I remember just somebody telling me this, a married person uh, who was facing separation. They say, Pastor, there's just something missing. Like, I, there's just no spark anymore. I don't know if I love her anymore. Friends, I have surprising news for you. The Bible, the only book inspired by the inventor of love, it does not record any context or time where looking for a spark is a prerequisite to being happily married. There's nothing like that in the whole scripture. The, have you ever read Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22? This is what it says. He who finds an attractive, well-poised woman who makes his heart beat faster has found a good thing and favor from the Lord. Does it say that? It doesn't say that. It says what? It says he who finds a wife. I don't care how she makes you feel. Is she your wife? <laughs> it doesn't matter. The Bible says you will find favor. Listen, many people... In the past, there was no chemistry. People were, were connected by their parents and they still found love and they found amazing marriages. This spark theory is an, it's, it's just an imitation. It's something from the devil that is causing us to lose out. And let me get to my main point. Why am I so against the spark theory? The reason is because it causes people who are looking for a marriage partner to look everywhere else except in the circle of their good friends. Now, men, let's be honest. That neighborhood girl you grew up with, that one you went to Sunday school with, you know what the one I'm talking about? The one who you even maybe went to primary school with? The one who shares your faith and values and even your background? She's clearly not in your list, is she? She's not the one you're looking for. Come on, just be honest with me. She's not the one in your list, for those of you who have lists. And even the ones who got married, she was not the one you're looking for. For girls, that guy you served in the ushering team with and in the prayer team with, the one who really just has a way he prays, He's not, he didn't make your cut. Why? Because we've been taught to look for somebody exotic, somebody exciting. Somebody who walks in and their locks are just flowing. And as they walk in, your heart is flowing with them. We're looking for that chemistry, that attraction. And guess what? I hear ladies all the time telling me, Pastor, Christian guys are so boring. It's like, man, they're not exciting like guys out there. Why? Because they're not as exotic. You know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about? I hear there are just no good men around. The net effect is that there is a whole large mass of eligible men and women in this church who are unfortunately in each other's bro zone, cis zone, or friend zone. Am I talking to somebody in the house right now? It's like all the guys around you are like, this one, it's like, oh my God, him? Never. I like him as a friend. Have you ever been told that? It's like, I like him as a friend. And the tragic thing with the spark theory is that while you're fasting and praying for God to one day bring the one, God may be shaking his head in amazement at heaven, in heaven, and think of all the ones he's put around you, in your house, in your ministry, around you, in your church. So listen, brothers and sisters, the Bible says watch and pray. Don't just pray, watch. Open your eyes. 
As you lift up in your hands in worship in church, I'm hoping your eyes are also awake. You're looking around. Don't just look at heaven. There are no wives in heaven. <laughs> They're here in church. Yes. And, and let me just say, this is why, one of the reasons why if you're worshiping from home and you, you're able to come to a Mavuno church, a physical church, this is one of the reasons why we don't give up meeting together. Some of you are praying for a godly spouse and you're in the house watching church in your pajamas. It will not happen. You need to be where the action is. God is moving. And let me just say this. I really believe that there are many people who, right? One of my great friends who, who's leading worship, he got married yesterday, Pastor Maluki. And, and let me just say that this guy, for a long time, he, was, he just closed his eyes. He was looking for people out there. And then one day the Lord opened his eyes and he saw somebody in the house, Pastor Sheikhs. And today they're happily, just as of yesterday, they're happily married. And I can tell you, they're going, God is going to do amazing things through them. Could it be, could it be that the person you're praying for is right here in church and you just need to watch and pray? Am I talking to somebody right now? By the way, I, this is my story because for a long time I was, I was, I, Ka, Pastor Carol was my best friend. <laughs> she was like in my friend zone and I was in her friend zone. And we just thought that this is, I mean, it's like, you know what? We both love God. We both served in the worship team. And we're like, my goodness, I mean, good person. I like her. We hang out. We talk a lot. But it's like I was looking for the exotic. And one day, some of my friends are the ones who confronted me and told me, seriously, you don't see that this is somebody that you can go out with? And I remember that day I rolled, I, I rolled on the floor laughing. I was like, really, guys? She's my buddy. She's my friend. But you know, as I went home, I mean, these guys, they really, I mean, I really thought through what they had said. And I realized, my goodness, we talked the whole day. I could talk to her all day and never get tired. And I'd see her the next day and I'd still have stories. And I used to tell her about my life and she'd tell me about her life. And we had so much in common. And what, that's when it dawned on me. Why would I want to marry somebody who is not my friend? Okay, I know I'm rubbing against Hollywood right now. I'm defying the spirit of Hollywood in your mind right now. I'm lifting the veil. And maybe right now, some of you are already beginning to see, my goodness, I've been looking at everybody else except where God has put me. So number five, common mistake that people make when looking for a marriage partner is looking everywhere except where they're supposed to be looking, ignoring the friends around you, ignoring the people with common values around you. Now, having, having looked at all the things that you shouldn't do, the five mistakes, that's what we've been looking at. And I hope they've been useful, by the way. I want to conclude just by three practical things. Very quickly, three practical things you can start, to start doing this week, tomorrow, this month, that will greatly increase your chances of finding your life partner. So for those of you who are looking for a life partner, praying for a life partner, this is going to be the useful part. And even for those of you who are going to be advising people in that space, uh, this is a useful part for you. Number one, pray. Pray. Let me just say this. I know some of you are waiting for some romantic tips. This is, a, this is the most incredible thing I can tell you. Uh, start to pray early. Even if you're nowhere near wanting a relationship, start to pray. Uh, even if your heart is not even there yet, start to pray. Pray that God, if I do get married, Lord, this, pray, I pray for that person now. Start to pray that God would help you find the right person. But more than that, start to pray that God would help you become the right person. Pray that you would become the right person, that if somebody ever finds you, that you will be a blessing to them. Pray that God would shape your heart, chip away at your selfishness, cause you to become the person he created you to be. Because here's the thing about prayer. Many times we're praying for something and God is not refusing to answer. What he's doing is he's taking time to prepare you for that something. And for some of us, it can feel like a delay. Like, Lord, I've been praying for so long. And maybe the reason that it's taking so long is because God has a lot of work to do on you. <laughs> so maybe the thing to do is just not to give up. Just lean in. Pray that God prepares you. Some of you I know, you've been praying for four or five years. It's okay. Just keep praying and trusting God. And you know what happens when we pray? Is that, yes, the situation may not be changing, but I'm changing. I'm becoming more and more the person God created me to be. I'm becoming ready to be the person God created me to be. So remember, and, and for those of you who are married, this is also still very useful stuff. Uh, some of us are so busy trying to change the person. Stop changing them. Start to pray. And many times what happens when you pray for your spouse, God doesn't even start with them. He starts with you. And as you're changing, you're becoming the person that your spouse married and hoped to have married. And something begins to happen in them when they start to see the change in you. Through prayer, you can allow God to work on you and shape you into a great partner. Even as you pray for your partner to become the great partner that you desire them to be. So commit to start prayer. In fact, start tomorrow. 
Join us in our 4.30 a.m. prayers. We have 4.30 p.m. prayers at Mavuno Church every weekday. And the link is on our website, www.mavunochurch.org. Just check out the Limitless page. You'll see links to all our prayer pages. And just remember, if you're single, pray, but also watch. Also watch. Number two, plug in. Plug in. So the first P was pray. The second P is plug in. Join our discipleship group at Mavuno Church. Now, listen, I've been talking about discipleship groups. Maybe you're, you're bored of hearing about them. But a discipleship group is a fantastic space. It's a space where you're going to make a, a positive friendships, find accountability and support from people who are genuinely concerned about your welfare. But in addition, if you're single, you, it'll help you connect with other singles who are also growing in their faith. And you form great friendships there. If you're married, it'll help you find good mentors and support. And if you're married, you need some single friends as well. And for single people, we need married friends. So this is what's going to happen in our groups. And you're going to find family friends who become our support group. And you're going to grow in your faith as you do mission together. A discipleship group is a place for accountability, for growth, for support. Whether you're pursuing a marriage partner or whether that's the last thing in your mind right now, uh, this is something I'd recommend for everyone every single one of us. So number one, pray. Number two, plug in. Number three, pursue mentorship. We've talked about this all this time and I think it's important to just mention it again. If you're looking for a marriage partner, ensure that you identify and follow a couple of couples that have gone ahead of you. Follow them and learn. By the way, this is something that really, really became a blessing to Pastor Caro and I years ago and it still is, even now that we're married. Finding people who are ahead of us who are maybe 10 years ahead of us. They've been married for a while. We can watch their lives. We can see them. By the way, those days for us, we used to see how, how a young married couple operates. Nowadays, we learn about how retired couples operate because we have mentors in that space. We're able to see, my goodness, this is what happens when your kids leave the house because ours are about to get there. And so always having people ahead of you will always keep you ahead of your peers. So find those couples. Become... Uh, <laughs> Don't surround yourself with friends who are always complaining and complaining and grumbling about how their marriage is. Don't look for those kinds of friends because guess what's going to happen to you? You hang out with them, you will become them. Proverbs chapter, uh, sorry, Paul, the apostle Paul is the one who wrote 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33. Don't be misled, bad company corrupts good character. I mean, you, you hang out with people who are always moaning and, and whining and saying how bad marriage is. If that's the group that you're in, that's your WhatsApp group, trust me, you're going to become that. It'll actually rub off on you. But on the other hand, when you surround yourself with people who are committed to working towards good marriages, people who are determined to succeed as good parents, guess what happens? You become like them. Bible says, Solomon chapter, uh, Proverbs chapter 12, 27, verse 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. You become sharpened. Your relationship becomes effective. You become through association because you become who you follow. This is what happens. You become who you follow. And you know something? As you suck, as you, you, you broaden your circle of your relationships, your mentors, and you become greater and wiser. Some of us, as I said last, last week, some of your mentors will be in the books that you read together. And you might be surprised to find that there are couples who are ahead of their peers simply because they've followed mentors who are not even in the room, not even in the country. People who are helping them grow to the next level because they're following them. Do courses together. Now, I know these may not be the things you saw your parents do. It may not be something you ever saw at home, but as someone once said, you will never get different results by doing things the same way. If your parents had a good enough marriage, why in the world would you settle for a good enough when God is offering you the best? So aspire to have the best relationship you possibly could. So good people, this is the five common mistakes, the five deadly mistakes. That's what we've talked about today and how to overcome them. Number one, trusting your feelings. Number two, majoring on the majors. Number three, failing to consult wise mentors. Number four, dating in isolation. Number five, ignoring good friends. Now, if you notice, these mistakes are not confined to people looking for relationship partners. Uh, many of these mistakes are made, and when they are made when you're dating, they continue on in your marriage. And chances are some of you have even had marriage crush because of these mistakes. Now, the good news is that God doesn't give us his word to condemn us. He gives it to us to save us. And I really do believe the reason God has brought this series at this time is he's concerned about our relationships. He wants us to have a phenomenal, to have, to have great faith. But it's harder for us to do that if we're not growing in our relationships as well. And so this is why I believe this series is so important in this season. I want to pray for us as I conclude. Next week, we're going to look at how not to sabotage your relationship. So many of you are in relationships right now. We're going to be talking about how not to sabotage them. And even if you're not in a relationship, I think this is going to be something useful for every one of us. If you're friends who need to, to be here, 
Make sure you invite them to watch this. Send them the video. Uh, get them to watch today and ask them to come and join us next week. But as I conclude, I just want to pray. I want to pray for somebody right now who's looking for a spouse. There's some of us who've been looking for a spouse for a while. And I just want to pray for you right now because I believe that God is in the house. This Valentine's Day, there's some of us who are just feeling so lonely because you've wanted to be in a relationship for a while. And I believe that God sees you. And I want to actually make a very special prayer for you. I also want to pray for all the couples in the house that God will bless, bless your relationship. And so let me just pray for us as we conclude. Father, I thank you. Thank you for that person who even hates Valentine's because it reminds them of their single status. They hate it because it reminds them of the relationship they once had. They feel lonely at this time of the year. I thank you that, Lord Jesus, we as the body of Christ, that, Father God, we are the ones who know what it means to belong to the God who says that God is love, the God who is love. And I pray that, God who is love, that you would come into every home that is represented here and that you would encourage, you would strengthen. I speak over you right now that the Lord would encourage you and strengthen you. Listen, you're not less because you're single. You do not become more because you get married. God loves you as you are. And as you are, you are fully made in the image of God. I just want to affirm you this morning. But I also pray that the Lord would encourage you. And Father, as my brothers and sisters and, and sons and daughters who are watching this, many of them are praying for a married partner. I pray that, Lord, you would hear their prayer and that you would answer. Number one, help them to become the person that they need to be so they can attract the right person. But number two, I pray that, Lord, you'd help them to find the people, that, the person that they're praying for. Lord, I also pray for the relationships in the house. I pray for every marriage in this church, every person who's watching, who's married, everybody who's dating right now. I pray, Lord, for God-honoring relationships. I pray that, Lord, the things in our relationship that are not pleasing to you, that you would remove them. You would sift them from us. And I'm praying that, Lord, you would allow us to become more and more in our, uh, like you in our relationships. Help us to submit to one another. This is what the Word tells us, that we would submit to one another out of our reverence for Christ. I pray that husbands would honor their wives in this church, that wives would submit to and honor their husbands in this church, and that, Lord, you would give us a quality of marriages that would distinguish us and would cause people from the outside to say, my goodness, with Jesus, marriage works. Look at those people. And so I speak over you every blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And God's people say it together, Amen.